All right, everybody, welcome aboard. Thanks for coming to our trade school here at 12minutetrading.com. My name is Doc Severson. I will be your instructor today for today's session. So whether or not you're watching us live or whether you're watching this on a replay months or even years down the line, this is what we intend to do here at 12minutetrading.com is to build up a library of desired topics, things that solve problems for traders. And so one of the biggest problems for traders is actually price analysis, understanding what the price is doing and where it might be going next. And there's all kinds of different solutions to this problem. So I'm going to propose something a little bit different today. Maybe some of you have heard of this before, maybe you haven't. But this is what I call four powerful rules for trading any chart and any time frame. Let's get started here. So I'm going to put myself down in the lower left-hand corner, and hopefully I'm not going to compete with too much of the content, and uh, we will get started here. So we'll take questions at the end of this session uh, later on if uh, we have any folks that are on board and want to ask questions. And um, you're welcome to ask me questions after the fact. So if you're watching this replay later on and you have some questions or want to interact with us, um, feel free to Go ahead and hit the comments below. Okay, let's get started here. All right, so got 12 minutes. Uh, I am not gonna go through the entire legal disclaimer for this today, but uh, suffice it to say that we are not gonna be showing any trade recommendations in this. This is for education only. Okay, so uh, who am I? So maybe you have heard of me, maybe you haven't heard of me before. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hide myself for a second here. So if you've never heard of me, my name is Doc Severson. I've been an individual trader and performance coach since 2005, currently running the 12-minute trading daily target 100 service, which is every day at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Here, I am a past contributor for Options MD, or you may have heard of me at TheoTrade or Doc's Trading Tools, or maybe even the original Options Linebacker that started in 2005. My specialties are fractal price analysis, options and future strategies and trading mindset. And because of some of the study that I've done, I have written a couple of books which are available on amazon.com. First of all is Fractal Energy Trading, which is coincidentally the topic of today's trade school. So that's available on Amazon if you want to dive a little bit deeper. And Hacking the Holy Grail, which is more about the challenge of mental discipline when it comes to trading and how to acquire something like that. Okay, so that's who I am and that's what I do. So what are we going to do here today in today's trade school? My purpose is that, uh, well, I've been trading the live markets every day since 2004. So before that I was doing it sort of recreationally and then uh, since 2004 I went really full time. So I've made every mistake possible that a retail trader can make. Much of what I'm sharing today was learned by necessity and usually at great cost. So one tends to remember these things, right? So I went through the same journey that everybody else does with price discovery. I found that many things don't work for long before someone comes out with the new, new thing. Oh, you got to get the new thing, right? So I went back to the basics and honed my approach over a number of years. And what you see in front of you today and in the book and any other materials that we have at 12 Minute Trading is after you know literally 15 years of application of this so my purpose today is to help you understand how much you already know about the fundamentals of how to analyze price movement in a more accurate way than you might already be doing so many of the things that i'm going to show you here are rooted in nature and so <laughs> this is why they work when it comes to financial markets markets are just another live organism that's out there okay that's my purpose. That's where we're going. Uh, and by the way, I intend to finish this probably, we'll probably be done at about maybe 35 to 40 minutes after the hour here. So this, this will not take long. So uh, being an engineer or a former engineer or a pretend engineer, I don't know what you'd call it now. I haven't done any actual engineering work in years, but I usually try to start out something by understanding what the problem is. Because that's what engineers do. They fix problems, right? Lawyers litigate. Engineers fix problems. That's what I do. So what's broken? 
what problem do we need to fix? Well, I would say accurate charting and price discovery leading to trading edge. So just looking at a chart doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have any trading edge any more than 50% or a coin flip, right? So our own embedded human nature ensures that we start out the wrong way. So how do we start and how do we do it wrong? Well, see if this sounds familiar because this is how I see a lot of people start. Now, first of all, we are herd animals. One of my favorite things to do is to, um, you know, I tell you what, I'm going to disappear from the lower left-hand corner because it looks like I'm in front of everything here. We are herd animals. So one of my favorite things to do is to go to a football game on Saturday afternoon. I love college football, and I can't wait for the oncoming season. It should be great. You're surrounded by 100,000 of your you know, best friends. You know, it feels great to have strength in numbers. We do feel safety in a crowd. Nobody wants to be left behind. It's in our nature to go along with the crowd. You don't want to feel like you've missed out. That's where we start. That's kind of our default nature of what we do. And these days, I would say since the internet really hit in 1994, I was part of the very beginning of the internet once upon a time. In no time in history has there been so much freely available information and opinion, much of which we trust. Much of it we trust. So if you want to know, if you're looking to get a katana blade, you go onto Amazon and you're going to search for something that's got four or five stars. And you're going to look at the answered questions and the ratings and everything like that. And we implicitly trust this. We implicitly trust this. Right? We all do the same thing. Or we're going to go uh, say, you know what, I, I need some bacon today. Where can I go? Well, let's say Bacon Bros has got four stars. That's good enough. So for the better part of a generation, we've outsourced or we have socialized our decision-making process. If you want something, you go on there, you look for a number of stars, and then presto, away you go. You don't have to figure it out yourself. So we implicitly trust social opinion. And so, of course, what you're seeing is the destruction of social investing. And I, I say the destruction of it because in the past six months, past six or seven months or so, during this bear market, we have seen more people blow up their accounts on Wall Street bets. Every day there's another screenshot of lost porn on somebody's Robin Hood account. And it's depressing to look at that and say, no, that's not the right way to do it. But because social investing and social opinion go hand in hand with things like that, we're used to being told what to do. We arrive at a social hangout and we say, hi, guys, I'm new here. You're playing cards, right? And they say, we say, what do we do? Oh, well, you have to YOLO everything. You put your entire account into one trade and buy call options. And there you go. Bob's your uncle. So retail traders get into financial markets thinking that the safest thing to do is just go along with what everybody else is doing. And so trading has now become another extension of social media. And uh, I would say for the most part, it, this does not work. So the results of social investing are just like swimming with the sharks. You're always chasing the price of an asset, buying at the highs and selling out at the lows. Guys, this is never going to work for you. So... Once people figure this out and say, wow, this is really a bad idea. Maybe I should quit Wall Street bets or quit Twitter or FinTwit or whatever it is. So they go into the investing media. They say, well, I can trust CNBC or uh, Fox Business or whichever you know, media channel that's out there that's, that's established and has got a reputation to it. So <laughs> here's where this works against you. Like, here's a great example of Bill Ackman back in 2020 came along right at the very beginning of the pandemic. Actually, this is about a month into it when everybody was trying to feel out what was going on and, you know, what's, what's happening with the pandemic and what should we do. And so Bill Ackman, who is a well-known hedge fund trader from Pershing Square, says, oh, we got to shut down the whole country. It's the only thing to do. we got to shut down the whole country. It's going to be terrible but it's the only thing that we can do right now. And nobody up to that point had really said something like that. And all of a sudden, 
everybody listened to Bill and said, oh, my God, he's right. we got to shut down the whole country. I don't know if he's right or not, but right? But that's the public opinion at the time, like, because nobody else had said anything. And, oh, by the way, it just happened to be that he was entirely 100% short going into that appearance on CNBC. So he's talking his own book. So he creates this, you know, fantastic pre- presentation and very, very strong case why we need to shut everything down, which is going to lead to essentially zero GDP, and it crashed the market. Crashed the market much, much worse. So this, this is when the real strong selling started happening was right after Ackman because everybody said, oh, my God, maybe this guy's right. Maybe we need to do something like that. So what you'll find is the investing media is not your friend either because you got people on there talking their book and, you know, people trying to, you got funds trying to sell into the, you know, the mania that they generate by going, oh, everybody needs to buy into this stock. And then, you know, he's selling it into them. So you think the investing media is your key to knowing what's about to happen to markets? No, they don't care. All they care about is viewers and clicks. That's all they care about. They want viewership. They want ratings. They want clicks. They want ad revenue. So what you find is generally the worse that markets are doing, the more that they will inflame the fear. And you'll always be on, once again, the wrong side of the price. Okay? So we look for guidance. We say, man, I don't know what to do. We need help. We need to get away from the rabble. But the search can be equally difficult to find someone that aligns with your beliefs. It feels like everyone is out to take advantage of you. So this is how we all start with analysis. So what you got to do is you got to find your way. So today's challenge is that you're working with solitary price analysis, right? It's just you and the chart. It's no longer you're part of a trading floor or anything like that. It used to be like you could actually see and smell the price discovery, right? So these old pits like this, you could actually see like a wave of selling or buying or anything. You could, that was the price action right in front of you. You could see the emotions happening. But since everybody has moved off the floor and onto electronic charts, we have a different challenge today. Okay, so you have to have a plan. And you have to be treating this like a business. Like failure is not an option. And I had to get to this point myself. Like, look, look, I need a plan to do this. So you understand what you are trading and why you're trading it. You've stopped trying to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. You've stopped trying to go along with what everybody else is trading in your social media channel. So now you finally know what you trade and why you trade it. This is a, a you know, part of the progression that everybody needs to go through to get to where they're going to be. Okay, so finding your way, ultimately after many serial disappointments, those that make it finally figure out that they need to adopt our own plan. Now, this is where I see a lot of people making mistakes here. And I, I can tell that the, it's almost like this, this curve, and I'll explain this in a minute, but it's almost like this curve where somebody will start out with something relatively simple and through the first year or two, you're making things incredibly complex. And then if, you, if you're able to survive for long enough into the market, you'll eventually make things simple with time. Let me explain this, this uh, conundrum here. So we typically will just start with price only. And we look at this price chart, and if we're new, it doesn't mean anything to us. It's like it's just a price chart of past price action, and it means nothing to us. It gives us no price discovery to it. So, of course, everybody in social media is going to say, well, you've got to have some moving averages on here. At the minimum, the 50 and the 200, so you can identify the golden and the death crosses of your chart. And that's interesting, but it doesn't necessarily give you any signals today. So, of course, everybody is going to say, well, you're not a real trader unless you've got the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence. So you look at that and you say, okay, well, that's not a bad start, but I need signals. So, of course, you need the stochastics. You want crossover signals. So you got plenty of crossover signals now, even though they may not be necessarily accurate. Now we have... Momentum, we have crossover, we have entry and exit signals, 
We have moving averages. We know what the trend is doing. But somehow, it's still just not enough. We need more. And then somebody shows you the RSI and says, well, you don't have the RSI on your chart? Are you kidding me? You call yourself a professional? Well, so, okay, you put the RSI on your chart, and that shows you more overbought and oversold. But somehow, you still need more. And then somebody tells you about the Bollinger Bands. Oh, we now have volatility, an ad adaptation of volatility that we can apply towards the upper chart. Okay, super. So we know when things have gone a little too far, a little too fast, or we know when things are squeezing and are about to move. That's great, but it's still not enough. We need to apply the Keltner channels. We can put those inside of the Bollinger Band, so identify a squeeze, which is great. But somehow it's still not enough. And somebody tells you about the Arun Oscillator and says it's the greatest thing in the world, which is the one down at the bottom. Oh, it's 98% accurate, the Arun Oscillator. Okay? And then somebody tells you about the ADX and says, man, you can't trade without the ADX, so you know what the trend is doing, and then the DI plus and DI minus indicators. Okay, what have we just done? This is what everybody goes through in their first year or two. When they get into trading, they start to pile on the indicators because it's so cool, right? And especially the engineers of you out there are like, oh, I need to know about all these studies and everything like that so I can impress my friends at parties. What have you done to the price? You've actually compressed it into the most useless thing now. So the thing that's the most important is that what we've just obscured because now you're full of all these trailing studies on your chart. So that's what we all do. So is there a simpler way to do it? So I, I guess what I'm saying is once you go through that phase, if you recognize that phase, eventually what you'll start to do is uh, it's like a block of marble. You'll start to chip away at it until the masterpiece underneath of it starts to arrive. Maybe we need to simplify our approach to see what the answer is. Okay, so if we look at price, what about if we start with just price alone? It's never lagging. Price is never lagging. It's not based on some derivative study written 50 years ago by some dude you've never heard of, right? Indicators lie all the time because of the lag. Price never lies. It's always real time. It's right there. Price is the ultimate arbiter of value. It's never wrong. Price reflects everything that's currently discounted into the asset. This very second, markets are extremely efficient. So it's, it's great to start with price, but a lot of people say, but it's hard. I don't get it, right? So I used to have the same objections, but you can either keep doing the same thing and looking for different results, or you can learn what the rest of the professionals did long ago. More excuses will just waste your time. Let's get started. We need to learn how to read price. Okay, so that is what's broken. That is what's broken. So we're going to start with rule number one. These are the four powerful rules that I talked about. Larger time frames dominate the trend. So you're going you're gonna to find that these rules are relatively simple, right? Perhaps so much so that your mind will fight them because it, it's got to be tougher than this, right? So we'll start with time frames. I see a lot of traders arbitrarily selecting time frames to follow. Oh, you have to follow the 30-minute chart. The 30-minute chart will tell you what you need to do. Okay, well, why is that different from the hourly chart? Well, it's... It's the 30-minute chart. You need to follow the 30-minute chart. And there's, there's no real rhyme or reason behind why they're selecting. And so they're living and dying with each candle on a chart that's mostly just intraday noise. Or some people will say, well, I follow the one-minute chart. And this is where you're going to see a lot of noise, right? But people can't tell you the difference between this and a 15-minute chart, especially if they disagree. So it's, a, it's important to have a context for things. Context is massively important, just like everything else, right? Context helps. You're not going to understand a joke if you don't understand the context behind it. This is typically what happens when you go over to a foreign country and you hear them telling jokes and you don't get it because you don't understand the context. Someone just following a very small time frame chart is going to get whipped back and forth if they don't understand the tide. So when we look at something like this, like a weekly chart is going to show you 
a much larger trend and almost the tide, and not just the waves coming into the shore, but it's also kind of the tide which moves in and out. The larger time frame charts are much more powerful than the intraday candles. Here's one of my favorite visual analogies, because you guys have all done this before, even if it's a cat. Okay, so for you cat people, we'll say walking the cat. So if you and your dog are going from point A to point B, you're going from the house and maybe you're going to the park or something like that. Your dog is on the leash. Now, most people that I know are going to just walk straight from point A to point B, right? Unless they're it's my wife and there's a garage sale along the way, then she'll take a detour for that garage sale. But most people will just walk straight. Hey, I must go to the park, so I'm going to the park, right? What will the dog do? It depends on what kind of breed the dog is. If it's a, something like a beagle, it will probably use its nose and it's all over the place. It will go and orbit to the extent of the leash. And it will go up and down and up and down and left and right and all over the place, especially if it's not a trained hound. But guess what? It arrives at the same place, the same destination as you do. So this represents, you represent the larger time frame. You're 10 times the mass of the dog, right? Is Who's going to lead whom here? You are going to lead the dog. You have 10 times the mass of the dog. The dog is ultimately going to follow in the same direction as you. This is a good example of what it looks like where you have smaller time frames, which are going to have all kinds of noise and all kinds of directive moves intraday. But then when you zoom out and you understand the context of what's going on, this could be something like a weekly chart. And this could be an intraday chart like that. Walking the dog. Think about walking the dog in terms of time frames. So smaller time frames, if you, if you place this towards a trading analogy, okay, wouldn't you want to be going long like right there? Wouldn't you want to be going long because you know that at some point, if, you know, if, if this is the ultimate direction, if this is the ultimate context of what's going on, or you'd want to be going, well, you wouldn't want to be going short up here because that's counter trend. You want to be going long here and long here. Okay, so trading is just about regular analogies that we see every day. So this is what we call the anchor chart and the signal chart. So think of you as the anchor. You're going to set the tone. You're 10 times the mass. And maybe your dog is going to be the signal chart. Smaller, more mobile quicker, much more active, much more volatile. And this is what we do. We signed the anchor chart and we assigned the signal chart. So the anchor chart is going to set the direction that we're going to trade in. Remember, rule number one says larger time frames dominate the trend. When we have a trend in this direction, we're going to see pullbacks along the way. But ultimately, that trend is going to sustain and it's going to survive the pullbacks and eventually pull these pullbacks along the way. So even though it comes back in an opposite direction, it gets pulled in the direction of the trend. It gets pulled in the direction of the trend. Every pullback gets pulled in the direction of the trend like this. And so the signal chart will tell us when we have an opportunity to get back in, in the direction of the trend. So this, is, this can be all that you need. It's just multiple time frames in rule number one. So understand what larger time frames to add to your signal chart to create an anchor chart. If you're day trading, it may be something like a 10-minute chart. And a signal chart might be something like a one-minute chart. Or if you're swing trading, it could be something like a weekly chart is your anchor chart, and maybe your daily chart is going to be the the signal chart. So we want to trade in the direction of the anchor chart swing, the anchor chart, which is the larger time frame. If we've identified a swing, we want to trade in that direction. Right? If you're if you're 
On a bicycle, you want to go in the direction of the peloton. You want to get that draft off the peloton. We want to trade in the direction of the anchor chart swing. Okay, larger time frames dominate the overall trend. That's rule number one. Okay, rule number two is the actual converse of that rule, reversals. Now we're going to start about talking about reversals. How do reversals happen? How do we reverse the trend? Reversals are the holy grail of trading because if you can catch... What typically people do is that they will see a trend and they'll wait and they'll say, well, maybe it's not really a trend. Maybe that's a pullback. Oh, there it goes again. All right. All right. Here we go. Like, uh, and finally, you can't take it anymore. You chase after this one, and then that's exactly when it dies. So finding that reversal, and also, if we identify this reversal, this is the best risk reward that we're ever going to find on a trade is the very first reversal at a smaller time frame. So reversals are the holy grail of trading. So we're, that's what everyone's after. Regardless of the time frame involved, a true reversal of trend offers the very highest reward to risk. Now, we're not going to be able to spot reversals on an anchor chart. It's just too slow. It takes too long. It's like, what do they call the uh, an aircraft carrier trying to uh, make a 180-degree turn out in the middle of the Pacific? It's called a Williamson turn. And it takes literally uh, like a mile or two before that thing, like, you know, they got to heel that thing over and you know, turn the rudder and it's just so much momentum and so much tonnage to turn around. So it's just not going to be very nimble versus a, a little, you know, inflatable Zodiac, you know, we'll think we'll just spin on a dime. It depends on how much, you know, momentum mass that you have. Okay, so we're not going to be able to spot reversals on the anchor chart, but we can do that from the signal chart. Change happens from the inside out. Here's another analogy of nature, right? So things change from smart, smaller to larger from the inside out. All it takes is one virus that hits a host cell, replicates, and each one of those new viruses hits their own host cell, it replicates exponentially, and it will swamp your immune system. All it takes is one virus. Change happens from the inside out. Trend reversal starts from the smallest time frames. And then it propagates higher. It might start from the one-minute chart, propagates up to the five-minute chart, propagates up to the hourly chart, then to the daily chart. Now you got something. And then eventually it propagates to the weekly chart. This is what happened to the bear market. We had a bear market, at least so far we still have a bear market, although it's starting to reverse. Is it just another monthly lower high, or is it something more important? Think about this. Change happens from the inside out. If you drive the same car every day, you don't notice items wearing and degrading until somebody else drives it and says, man, that thing is terrible. Didn't you notice that your brakes are awful? No, I didn't notice it because you change it. You, know, you drive it every day. Change is often small and imperceptible unless if your focus is broad. So change happening at small levels are our early warning to possible failures. So I will look at this all the time. Hey, we have a change. We have a change in polarity at the daily chart. Is this something that's real or is this just a pullback? So this is why we use the signal chart. So here's a, here's a signal chart, which in this case is a one-hour chart, but we see like reversals here. Here is a, here's a former uptrend with higher highs and higher lows, higher highs, and all of a sudden a lower low and a lower high and a lower low. We have an, a, a change in polarity to the downside now. That's an early warning. That's an early warning that something is happening. Here's a, a downtrend. Lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. This is where everybody goes short right down here. Okay, it's safe now. Then all of a sudden, boom, we have a higher high, higher low, higher high. We have a reversal on the signal chart. It's an early warning signal. Change propagates higher. Here's a daily reversal, 
And this daily reversal, this is the uh, reversal off the pandemic low, by the way. And once that was identified, that got us in way earlier before we had this thing. It was like months before we noticed the reversal that propagated into the weekly chart. Okay, so applying rule number two. Remember, you've got your anchor chart, you've got your signal chart. Understand what smaller time frames to use. You'll identify those with the anchor and the signal. Trade in the direction of the anchor chart swing, that's rule number one, until you see the signal chart reversing. Okay, warning, time out. Reversals come from the inside out. See if it propagates higher. Maybe it's just a pullback, or it could be the beginning of a big reversal. This will give you much more understanding of how the price is actually moving. I'm never confused by what the price is doing because I can always see three different ways that it could go from here. And it's going to fit one of those very few scenarios. I'm not going to be surprised. I'm not going to be like, yeah, but that's not what the guy on Twitter said. He's never wrong. This is what we do to ourselves. We listen to somebody else, we believe them, and then we fall into this sort of confirmation bias and we turn our brains off. We put the blinders on. Understanding what the price is doing and what it would have to do to either recapture the trend or reverse will give you that, that understanding, that context of what we're talking about. So that's rule number two. Okay, you're going to like number three because it's simple. A very simple rule, I see it in play every day. Descending patterns break to the upside and vice versa. What goes up goes down. What rises must eventually fall. I know what it seems like. It seems like when markets are rallying, they will never stop. When markets are selling off, it feels like they will never stop. But they do. And you don't notice it because you're emotionally you know, you've been emotionally uh, affected by the entire trade. And you don't notice it when reversals happen. But reversals happen based on these trend lines. It's just simple physics. So this is where we use trend lines. And trend lines are not, you know, they're not infallible. I'm not going to sit here and say the trend lines are infallible. But it will show you when a descending pattern is starting to move to an ascending pattern or when an ascending pattern moves to a descending pattern. So how do we apply rule number three? This works on every time frame, but obviously you'll see more instances of this. You'll, you'll see this constantly intraday. And you, you'll see this rarely on something like the daily chart, a rare and it shows the first possible break of a trend change. It's used more of as a filter than a trade entry. It adds confluence to the reversal signals. And I'll, I'll show you actually an example of one of these that we took uh, not long ago. So remember, rule number three, ascending patterns break to the downside. Descending patterns break to the upside. And that happens over and over and over again. Okay, so rule number four. Now we get to the fourth rule, and this one's really important. And this is where we get into the concept of energy. Markets have energy, believe it or not. They act just like an organism. Range expansion leads to range contraction. Now what I mean by this, let me define this first of all. Range expansion means here's a range, and then it expands the range. It's a trend. But when something trends like this, Range expansion, it moves to range contraction. And then range contraction moves to range expansion again, which leads to range contraction, which leads to the next range expansion, which could go in the opposite direction. Expansion and contraction. It just works like potential energy is built up. It expands into kinetic energy until it's exhausted, and then it's restored again with potential energy, and it just goes back and forth again, just like in real life. Now, one of the first things that everybody is taught when you get into trading 
Technical Analysis 101. We're going to teach you about overbought and oversold. Somewhere along the way, traders got fed this notion of an asset being overbought or oversold. And what's even worse is you hear people get them backwards. You know, you'll see a, a market going straight up. Oh, well, that's oversold. No, it's not oversold. It's overbought. But no one cares, right? So we quietly go along with this theory because we all understand the difference between hungry and stuffed. But in a world where there's no limit on money printing, and actually the Fed is trying to taper and it's having a really difficult time doing it, I think that the notion of overbought and oversold is outdated and obsolete. There I said it. Okay. So markets can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. So I see this all the time. Here's a typical stochastic oscillator, which can measure overbought and oversold. And something will be overbought, overbought, overbought for a long period of time. And even if it shows divergence, it continues being more overbought. Well, it's not supposed to work like that. How many times have you said that? How many times have you argued with the price? and said, hey, that's not supposed to happen. That's against the rules. <laughs> Welcome to the markets. Doesn't work that way. So here's overbought for like forever. And then finally, you know, and then it goes overbought forever and then overbought forever, right? So if you've ever been on the opposite side of one of those moves, oh, it's overbought, so I should put a bear call spread in play. That'll be untouchable, right? That was uh, one of my worst trades ever was like that, which was part of the article that we've just published. Okay, so I, I don't want to go beat this thing into the ground, but, I mean, a lot of people will sit there and argue at charts, and um, it's, you're not going to win. Okay, so markets move differently than that. They run as far as they can until they hit exhaustion, and then they consolidate and then repeat. It goes on and on and on. Range contraction will go on until it re-energizes and then it starts to trend in one direction or another. And then once that trend goes into exhaustion, it'll once again reconsolidate. The cycle repeats forever. It's not overbought and oversold. It's range expansion, range contraction. That is not taught. So you're learning something new today if you haven't been through this before. So markets copy nature, right? How do we summit Everest? We go as hard as we can. We start in the base camp, and then, you know, we acclimate ourselves to the oxygen levels at base camp, and then we climb for a day or so, and then we get up to camp number one. Sometimes people can't acclimate to the oxygen at camp one. they got to go back down again. That's called a pullback. But they'll stay at camp number one for maybe another three days or so and acclimate to that level. Range contraction. And then range expansion again. They'll go up to camp two, spend three days up there. Then camp three, spend a couple of days up there. Then camp four, and acclimate themselves to even less oxygen. And then eventually go for the summit. This is how markets move, guys. Range expansion, range contraction. Range expansion, range contraction. Range expansion, range contraction. Same thing happens over and over and over again. There's no overbought and oversold. Wait a minute, you can't come in this camp. This is overbought. It doesn't work like that. So we can identify expansion and contraction on charts, and we use what's called the choppiness index. Some of you are already aware of this. You're not going to find it on Thinkorswim unless you can apply the custom code to that, which we have in our courses. Some of the other vendors that are out there that have this are like TradingView has got it. The, let's see, what is this? Uh, Trend Spider, Trend Spider, which is this package here, which I like this charting package. This has it. TradeStation does not have it. Last time I used it, you need custom code for that. So it's kind of like, Back and forth, like if you just get a generic uh, broker's charting package like E-Trade with no custom ability to add studies, it's not going to have it. So you have to use something that offers custom, you know, if they don't have it already. So if you have any questions about that, you can 
you can always reach out and I'll let you know what works and what doesn't. So we can do this expansion contraction on a 60 minute chart. Notice that range contraction here, range contraction builds up the energy, builds up the energy. This is measuring the linearity of a trend. And then this is a very linear trend here, very linear trend. So it goes into exhaustion. And so range expansion goes to range contraction. And then it's ready to trend again. So what does it do? Boom. But then it goes into exhaustion. So it consolidates. And then what does it do? Boom. It's not overbought, oversold, guys. It's range expansion, range contraction. So we can do this intraday. This is intraday with tick charts, or you can use this with range bars or minute charts, anything that you want to do. It doesn't matter. Here's today's chart. Here's today's chart, and this is the, what do we got here? We got the monthly, we got the weekly, and we have the daily. Guess what? We have range contraction. What is all this? All of this price movement over the last year has been range contraction, right? We call this a bear market, but all it's doing is it's going into nonlinear behavior, nonlinear behavior. What do we have in the weekly chart? We have a downtrend, lower highs, lower lows, moving into what could be an uptrend. Looks like it might be an uptrend already. This is definitely a weekly swing, might be a weekly uptrend. And then what do we have with the daily chart? Oh, by the way, weekly, huge amount of energy here. What do we have with the daily chart? Daily chart, big, strong trend here. Range expansion, range contraction, breaks out once again. And exhaustion, okay? Is it likely to keep going higher? It could, but it's unlikely. It's more likely to consolidate into the next range contraction. Right underneath resistance here at that 200-day moving average. So understanding where things fit into, you know, in this case, we can use different time frames. This could be our signal chart. This could be our anchor chart. And maybe this is just going to be our super anchor chart, right? So it's just too slow. The monthly chart's just too slow to get signals off of. But I can tell us that the overall context of this is, boy, we have a huge move that we have on tap right now. Let me tell you guys, this is we don't see signals like this very often. We have a huge move on tap. So how do we apply rule number four? And then we'll finish off today here with a couple of examples. Using these principles will give us an early warning when a consolidating price chart is about to break out, as well as the converse warning when a trending chart is about to stall out. Wouldn't that be nice to know? Right? You could set up an iron condor or a calendar spread against something like that. So this works on every time frame, but the larger the time frame, the more powerful the signal. A weekly exhaustion signal means that we might see several weeks of volatile trendless action. Conversely, and to pay attention to this one, a weekly charge signal might tell us to expect a major break in price. A major price swing is on tap right now. September and October, we're going to get some big movement. Going to get some big movement. Got to be in the right direction of that movement. So I use the CHOP index linearity of the current trend to determine the exhaustion and charge levels. Number four, rule number four, range expansion leads to range contraction. Range contraction, therefore, leads to range expansion. And on and on and on. Okay, so that's our four rules. Let me give you some trade examples, just really quick. Okay, so here's XLV, which is the healthcare. And uh, this was a, a signal that we had on healthcare. We had trend going in this direction, right? We have monthly trend, we have weekly trend, and the weekly, in this case, this is our anchor chart. This was showing a huge amount of energy. And all we're doing is we're looking for, we have a huge amount of energy as well on this. All we're doing is looking for mean reversion on this trend back here in this direction. And we have plenty of energy to drive this move. And this is a, just a debit call vertical, very simple trade, 16 calendar days. Probably didn't need to hold it that long. I think we got it. I think we got involved 
in here and actually went opposite direction before, which is very common, but we're trading in the direction of the anchor chart swing, which is rule number one. Rule number four says range contraction leads to range expansion. And that's all we do. Four simple rules. Here's a non-directional trade on the SPX. I did a calendar spread. This was price going higher, going into exhaustion, going into exhaustion, range expansion, goes to range contraction. Now, here's the important thing. So I knew right here that we had just hit exhaustion. So it's very likely for it to stay in a range for a few days at that point. Very likely. The probabilities are very high. And so I very aggressively entered this. But also what I noticed was about three or four days later, the price was now fully charged up again and ready to go. So that is the key there. It's not necessarily always getting in, but it's also getting out. It's knowing when to get out, which is important. In this case, I took seven days and I was like, okay, that's it. We're out of here. We got to get out of here because this thing's about ready to pop. And you know when something's about ready to go, right? You, you know, if your wife is eight and a half months pregnant, that's, that's some serious range contraction in there. It's about ready to go. You don't travel during that time. Okay, here's, a, here's another trade, which is just more price action and a lot less of rule number four. But here's range, range, uh, there we go. Range expansion, range contraction, and so we played what's called an iron butterfly in there to catch the range contraction. That This was actually this morning, this morning's trade. $50 profit per contract. More was available. 10 minutes a whole time. That's kind of my, my type of trade. Get in, get your fair share, and get out. Just simple concepts. There's nothing all that difficult about this. And here is a recent... Swing on the spiders. And this one I like because it shows two different rules coming into play. Actually, three different rules. Okay, we had, here's, here's rule number one. Trade in the direction of the anchor chart swing. Larger time frames dominate the price action, right? Okay, so you'd think, okay, we're trading to the downside. But rule number three says that descending patterns break to the upside. And it broke right there at the same time that rule four says that range contraction, which is what we had from here, range contraction leads to range expansion. Rule number two says that reversals happen from the inside out. This is a weekly trend to the downside. Weekly trend to the downside and looking for a move to the upside. So all four rules were in this play at this time. Okay, so we're sitting here looking at this being a reversal, and this is where I entered the trade. This is where I entered the trade at this point. And we put 788 in, and just a few days later, this really took off. It's like squeezing a pit from these things. Range contraction leads to range expansion. And so this was good for 213% return on capital, 10 calendar days, whole time. That's the kind of trade I like right? Don't have to sit in there for a whole long time. I love these types of trades. Okay, so those are just some recent trade examples we use at 12-minute trading. We use fractal energy trading techniques for trade entry, defense, and exits as well, too. So let's put it all together. Let's summarize here. We'll get you on your way. Don't eat the elephant all at once. Consider adding one of these rules today to your trading, maybe two, maybe even four down the road. So again, what's broken? We looked at how traders usually start making decisions, mostly with bad information from socializing their decisions and how they usually gravitate towards price or charts as price discoveries is easier to read visually, right? But they just as quickly slow their progress by piling on too much information onto their charts. We also saw that many are still using outdated concepts of overbought and oversold that came in before the days of quantitative easing. So that's what not to do. 
So we got rule number one, larger time frames dominate the trend. Always have an anchor chart that you're going to use. Understand that anchor trend and the swing of that, that anchor chart. Trade in the direction of the anchor chart swing. Now, what does that mean? Here's, here's the trend of the anchor chart. The trend is to the upside, but each one of these is a swing. Each one of these is a swing. You can actually go counter. The anchor chart has got enough room to go counter trend in each one of these. Now, I prefer to just go in the direction of the anchor chart trend as well, too, but I'm saying at least if you trade within the anchor chart swing, that's good enough. Rule number two, reversals start from the inside out and they propagate higher in time frame. They will start at the signal chart or lower and will start to propagate higher in time frame. Change in market character begins from the inside. Markets that go in a bull market are very quiet and trending. They are very stair-stepping. And then what happens is when we trans transition into a bear, what starts to happen is you start off with a shot over the bow. You start to get very, very noisy and very volatile like this before you start to trend to the downside. Market character during a bear market is very, very different from a bull market. And it's very important to understand what works and what doesn't work in each one of those. That's rule number two. So this will give you more understanding of what's actually happening with the price. Rule number three, ascending patterns break to the downside. Very simple. Descending patterns break to the upside. It's just a filter used with other forms of analysis, but upside reversals tend to go hand in hand with descending trend line breaks, vice versa. And then we get to rule number four, range expansion leads eventually to range contraction vice versa. Range contraction leads to range expansion. Again, the cycle never ends. Understand how to measure and quantify range expansion and contraction cycles. Okay. Uh, definitely have been drinking from the fire hydrant today. There's no doubt of that if this is your first view through this. So where do you go from here? It's my belief that everybody needs to shift to price and energy-based analysis. Ditch the old paradigm that no longer works. You might be wondering how you get started with something like this. You may not have a map to get there. We can help you. So join David Lucas and me at 12minutetrading.com where we use fractals and price action every day. Consider subscribing to our YouTube channel for market updates and more free content like this. We intend to do these on a weekly basis, what we call trade school. So we're going to do these in the webinar format, and then they'll stay up as an archive for this. So we'll have a whole school full of trade schools coming up here fairly soon. This is number one. This is number one, but this is how important this is. And oh, by the way, if you have, um, you know, if you're looking for a quick fix, go out to Amazon.com and look for my Fractal Energy Trading Book. That will give you some, some good insight in terms of this. And we'll, uh, repetition is the mother of skill, of course. But look to us at 12 Minute Trading to help you solve your problems. With that, that is the end of today's webinar. I'll uh, stand by for any questions if they occur. And don't forget, if you're watching this on a replay down the road, if you have any questions, please go ahead and hit me, doc at 12minutetrading.com. You're welcome to interact with us directly and see if we can help your, your, um, your trading challenges today. Okay, if there's no other questions, if there's no questions for today, then I, I will wish you guys a very happy weekend. And thank you for watching this, this webinar of the, uh, the four powerful rules for trading any chart in any time frame. This is Fractal Energy Trading. And this is Doc signing off for Trade School. Today is Friday, August 12th of 2022. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care.